The coolest feature of the new crop of UV laser machines, like this COM marker Omni X, is 3D glass engraving. That produces a hologram like 3D ghost image in blocks of glass like this one, which is something you can't do with any other kind of laser. But how does that work, and why is it limited to UV lasers? To understand, you first need to know that lasers are commonly misrepresented in movies, TV, and even some technical literature. The laser beam is not a one-dimensional line, and it isn't a cylinder either. A laser beam is actually more of an elongated hourglass shape, starting wide and narrowing until it reaches its focal point, and then widening again. That focal point is where the energy density is highest and where the laser is the most effective. That's why when you use a laser engraver or cutter, you have to make sure it's in focus. If the laser beam's focal point is too far from the surface of the material, it will perform very poorly, potentially not marking the material at all. And that's also why it's possible to make 3D engravings inside of glass. All laser engravers and cutters can already direct the laser beam in the X and Y axes. The Omni X does that with a mirror galvanometer, just like many other laser machines. Some models, including diode lasers and especially CO2 lasers, use gantry systems instead. That's the X and Y of 3D space sorted. For Z, the machine simply needs to move the focal point higher or lower. The Omni X does that the same way it does autofocusing, which is by moving the entire laser module up and down. The laser beam shines into the glass at a chosen angle to target a specific XY coordinate, but doesn't do anything to the glass until it reaches its focal point. There, and only there, does it have enough energy density to create a tiny microfracture in the glass. Then, after the focal point, the laser beam disperses again and goes back to not possessing enough energy density to do anything. By creating thousands of microfractures in the glass at specific points, the laser can make visible lines and walls. It's a bit like 3D printing, but without any infill. It would be possible to fill in the 3D volume completely, but that isn't necessary and might actually be counterproductive. The slight transparency makes the 3D engraving easier to see. But this won't work properly unless you use the right kind of glass. In this case, Commarker recommends something called K9 glass, which is also referred to as K9 crystal. It's an optical borosilicate crown glass that contains 9% lead oxide. The UV laser reacts well to that chemical composition, and K9 glass is manufactured to good tolerances. The tolerances are important because the glass has to be almost perfect geometrically. Refraction would cause a real problem if the top of the surface wasn't very flat and very perpendicular to the laser source, something that the software assumes when calculating the laser trajectory for the given 3D model. The process is similar for all UV laser machines capable of performing this kind of 3D glass engraving, but with the COM marker software, you start by loading a 3D model, which can be an STL from a 3D printing repository or something you sculpted yourself in separate software. You can then set the size of the glass, but the software assumes it's a rectangular prism. From there, the only other options for geometry are the size and position of the model to engrave inside of the glass. All the other settings are for the laser itself, power, frequency, pulse timing, and that sort of thing. When engraving, the machine directs the laser in X and Y according to its calculations, and after it finishes a layer, it moves up by a fraction of a millimeter and then repeats the process for the next layer. Now you're probably wondering if you can do this with other types of lasers, like a fiber laser or blue diode laser. The answer is no, uh, at least not as far as I'm aware. Before I explain why, I want to tell you about a fun product from this video's sponsor, AIPi. The X-Origin AIPi Lite is a small and very affordable ESP32 S3 based device designed specifically to act as an AI voice assistant. It has a built-in microphone, speaker, and even a TFT LCD, which is an awful lot of hardware for the current sale price of $16.99. 
The cool part is you can configure the AI model it uses and personalize its voice. For example, I wanted my AI assistant to have the calming, tranquil voice of Sir David Attenborough, so I used the voice replication feature on a clip of his narration, then set the AI model to Google's Gemini, telling it to speak like the man himself. Tell me about lions. Ah, the lion. Panthera Leo, a name that echoes with the very spirit of the African savannah, does it not? Observe, if you will, this magnificent creature. As you can hear, it works very well, and the AI Pi Lite is available with a little battery backpack that snaps on with magnets, so I can have Sir Attenborough with me wherever I go. If you want to get your own X-Origin AI Pi Lite, head to AIPi.com or use the link in the description. All right, so why does this 3D glass engraving only work with UV lasers? There are a few reasons for that, and the first is the geometry of the laser beam. As you already learned, that has a hourglass shape, but the angles differ based on the way the laser is generated. A UV laser has a steep divergence angle, which means it quickly loses focus. That's a good thing for this kind of 3D glass engraving because you only want enough energy density to create a microfracture for a very short distance. If the divergence angle was shallow and slow to lose focus, the laser would have good energy density for a longer distance and would make microfractures kind of like vertical lines in the glass. In addition to that, laser beams aren't perfectly formed and there is always some slight scattering. That means that there is never a point, even at the focal point, where the beam actually has zero thickness. The result is a spot size that varies based on laser type. UV lasers have very small spot sizes and therefore very good fidelity. A quick side note, the spot isn't always a perfect circle and it isn't always consistent across its entire area. Those factors can affect performance and the marks left by the laser, but the details are honestly beyond me and aren't really important for this video. Getting back to spot size, this is kind of like drawing with a fine tipped pen compared to a big fat Sharpie. To put that into perspective with real numbers, the Omniax has a specified laser spot size of 0.0019 millimeters. The X-Tool P3, an 80 watt CO2 laser, has a specified laser spot size of 0.15 by 0.2 millimeters. Here are those two at the same relative scale. As you can see, the Omni-X's UV laser spot is very, very small. In fact, that's part of why UV lasers can get away with running at such low power levels. My Omni-X is only 5 watts, and yet it can easily and quickly engrave metal. That's because the energy density is so high as all of that power goes into that tiny spot at the focal point. The last reason that UV lasers are good for this kind of 3D glass engraving is a result of how the wavelength reacts to the material. The literature on this topic tells us that the lead oxide in silicate is especially sensitive to wavelengths in the UV spectrum and slightly into the blue light end of the visible spectrum. Therefore, it will react to UV lasers and potentially even blue diode lasers. My hunch is that UV lasers are unique in that they can transfer energy to the lead oxide in the canine glass, but only just enough to create a microfracture at the focal point. Other laser types either won't transfer energy well at all, or will transfer energy too well, engraving along the entire beam path instead of just at the focal point, or engraving so much at the top surface that the beam can't then penetrate into the interior. The balance is important, and combined with the geometric characteristics, the UV lasers are in the Goldilocks zone for only producing microfractures in the canine glass at their focal points. That allows for targeting of specific X, Y, and Z coordinates in 3D space, enabling this kind of 3D engraving. So, now you know how it's possible to do 3D engraving inside glass, and why that possibility is limited to UV laser machines. Thanks for watching.